Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom Israel, most high in Christ, bless. Glad you're with us tonight. I am Captain Dakar. Why don't you spend 15 minutes with us or so. Uh, beside me, I have Officer... Officer Ehud. Hey, Shalom. Glad to have you, Officer Ehud. Listen, Israel, we're glad to be here with you tonight. Just a few minutes of your time. We just want to be able to bring out a couple of things. And what I want to talk about with the Word of God tonight pertaining to us is that in Israel, it talks about that the subject matter is to die is the gain. So what I want to bring out is that we want to go into the book of Leviticus, officer. Touch on what it is that uh, in chapter 16 and bring out verse 1. The book of Leviticus, chapter 16 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses uh -huh. after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. Because when you go back into this history, you'll see that his two sons offered up a sacrifice unto the Lord, and they was not supposed to. And yes, they did die. And yes, they brought forth transgression. But we have an opportunity to get things right. So Aaron and them continue to deal with the people and the Most High. So what I want you to do is go back. Well, I tell you what, let's just touch on it. Go back to Leviticus chapter 10 right quick. We'll touch on it and see what happened to Aaron's sons. The book of Leviticus, chapter 10, and verse 1. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the dab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. Which he commanded them not. Read on. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. And that's what we just read in verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 1. Let's go back there. But this time, also, I want you to pick it up in verse 16, verse 16. Chapter 16, verse 16. Leviticus, chapter 16, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he shall make an, atone an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. One of the things I like to make sure that we're talking about, that we want to encompass all our people. We are a nation as, uh, as one people. We are all dealing with the Most High. Read on. And because of their transgressions and all their sins. And that's how the Most High holds us accountable. He holds us accountable for the things that he tells us to do. And when we fall short or do those things that he not tell us to do, then we're going to be held accountable. Read on. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And read on. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth into, into, into make an atonement in the holy place mm -hmm. until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household, and, and for all the congregation of Israel. And for the all the congregation of Israel. Just showing that the Most High, uh, we would come back and we would be atoned for those things that we've done. As a nation of people, that's the point I just want to get out of that. Come on, go with me. Also, let's go back to uh, Isaiah 59 and 1. I want to bring this out. I want to touch on it just for a short moment. The book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Chapter 59 and verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, 
that it cannot save. The Most High has always dealt with us. It, it's not that he cannot deliver us. It's not that he cannot help us or establish us. Read on. Neither his ear heavy. And when we send up prayers before the Most High, he hearkens unto us those prayers of righteousness. Read on. That it cannot hear. That he just not cannot hear us. Read on. But your iniquities have separated between you and in your God. And that's what we have to understand as a nation of people is that there is a place where we can go, where we can find ourselves, getting ourselves in trouble with the Most High. And that's what it is. It's always been sin when we transgress what he told us. Read that part again. But what? But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Read. And your sins have hid his face from you. And then, then we can't, he's not dealing with us because of our transgressions. So let's continue on. Also, give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 15. The book of, the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. chapter 6 and verse 15. Is it uh, 6 and 15? Yes, sir. Right. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Uh -huh. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Right. We belong to Christ. Read on. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? When we do things wrong, uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, 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 members of a harlot, read on. God forbid. It's not the case. We're bought with a price. And we believe and we do righteousness. So I want to go back and touch on that a little more. Let's go to Romans 12 and 1. Let's touch on that. Let's keep it moving. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Uh -huh. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So then it was back then they was atoning for our sins, and they were bringing forth sacrifices. Now we're in a place where we can bring forth the sacrifice. We can present ourselves holy before the Most High, and through the blood of Christ, they allow us to be atoned back to the Most High. Read on. Holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That is our reasonable service. Read on the officer. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Israel, we must know that we are not, we are not, we are different, we are special, we are above, we are the children of God, and we have to take our mind, our understanding to another level, that we have to be able to walk in a place with the Most High because we are the children of God. Read on. That ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Accomplishing what he asks us to do. Keeping those commandments in righteousness. What I want you to do, officer, let's go into the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We're talking about Israel to die is to gain. And what we have to understand, we have to die to the things of this world that we may gain the kingdom. Read that from uh, what I got you reading, verse 11 and 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things not seen. We hadn't yet obtained the kingdom, but believing and keeping the commandments is our faith. Is separating ourselves from those things that are, are ungodly, that we may present ourselves holy and acceptable unto God, which our reasonable service is to do the will of God. Read on. Verse 2. Uh -huh. For by it the elders obtain a good report. And that's how we're going to receive the same report. When you go in here, you see the hall of our, our, form, our forefathers, how they was able to be faithful to the Most High, and they was able to do the will of those things. I think verse 4, who, who started? Started verse 4. Verse 4, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice so, than Cain. So Abel offered a sacrifice. Who else did good in, that, in, that, in the hall of, of, of the prophets? Read verse on. 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. So we are showing you there's examples that we have in our history of our forefathers, how they was able to present themselves for the Lord, how they was able to overcome things and separate from the sins of the world that they may gain those promises that were set before them. Is there anybody else? What about Noah? Verse 7, by faith, Noah being warned of God uh -huh. of things not seen so, as yet. So yet these are examples that we have. So what I want you to do, go down to verse 9. Read verse 9 for us, officer. Verse 9. Uh-huh. By faith, he subjoined in the land of promise, mm -hmm. as in a strange country, 
dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. With his father and his grandfather. The heirs with him of the same promise. And that's the promise that they was wanting to obtain. They was faithful in that what they was called to do. Drop down to verse 13 and help me out right there also. Verse, thir verse 13. Uh-huh. These all died in faith. But they all died in faith. That's what we're talking about, Israel. To die in the most high is to gain. And what happens a lot of time is we walk in this walk of faith. Yes, you're going to have to re be renewed in your mind. Yes, you're going to have to find out what is your reasonable service. Yes, you're going to have to find out what is the will of God. These things are going to allow you to accomplish your walk with the Most High, that you may be able to reach that place which you're ascribing for. And we want to learn how to, we want to know how we should be able to ascribe. We're going to talk about that as we go down a little farther. So is that all that? No, sir. Read that. These all died in faith, mm -hmm. not having received the promises. But they knew that if they continued to do what the Most High told them, that there was an opportunity for them to receive the promises that he had set before them. Read. But having seen them afar off. Even for us now, Israel, we seem like, you know, we're laboring in this gospel, and it seems like we have not yet. But if we continue to be steadfast in our calling and, and continue to walk, we can obtain those things that the Most High has set before us. We can endure this race. And that's why it's so important that, Israel, you understand that you're going to have to continue to press toward that mark. Is that all that also? No, sir. Read on. But having seen them afar off mm -hmm. and were persuaded of them, and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And this is not our rest. This is not our home. Understand that, Israel, that that's what we have to understand is that we cannot be comfortable here. The place already got us letting us see that we are uncomfortable here. So don't, we need not be conformed to this thing of this world. Let's be wise. Because what? We're like pilgrims. We're, we're, we're passing through here. That's all we're doing. We're passing through here. This is not any place we want to set up, but we want to keep it moving. We want to continue to press toward that mark because we're trying to make it home. Read that bottom part of that verse again. Yes, that was sir. something you said in there. Read that again. Yes, also. Sir. And were persuaded of them and embraced of them and confessed, and confessed read. that they were strangers mm. and pilgrims on the earth. Right, that we're just passing through. Let's get more of that in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Let's get some more of that also. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh-huh. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. That's what we have to understand, Israel, that as we want to gain and we die to the things of this world, but we have to abstain from things. There's things we got to separate from. We cannot no longer be staying and thinking that this is it. This is, this is, what, this is how we're going to make it. No, it said abstain. It means change, be conformed, cast off, cast down, be renewed. There's a lot we have to get our minds right and for us to receive it. Read that from the top again. Yes, sir. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, uh -huh. abstain. From fleshly lusts. We're just passing through here. Let's keep our minds right. Read on. Which war against the soul. Because you were trying to enter into our place of rest, Israel. That's what we must understand. We're trying to enter into that place. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and read with me, officer, verse 4 and verse 5. The book of 2 Timothy. Uh huh. Chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh huh. No man that warreth entangle himself. With the affairs of this life. Right, because once we begin to come in and understand through our repentance that we're starting to mortify the deeds of our flesh, so now we begin to cast off things. You begin to take on the mindset of Christ. Read on. That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Right, because now you begin to take on the mindset that you are fighting a war that you want to pass through here, as it said in the previous chapter, that we're pilgrims and strangers just passing through. Read on. And if a man also strive for masteries. And if he wants the kingdom, read on. Yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. And that's what we must do. We have to learn that the behavior that we separate ourselves from a lot of carnalness and come out from them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Come on, also continue to move with him. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. And we're going to touch on verse 9. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9. Uh-huh. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. Uh-huh. 
and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Read. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. And that's what it's going to take, Israel. Just, 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 it's going to take labor. And when you labor, that's you're working. You're scribing for mastery. You, you putting and you casting things off. Because there again, you have to die to this mortal flesh that you may gain immortality. That's what we want to do in Israel. It's important that we don't get faint-hearted. Sometimes we may do get faint-hearted, but we got to continue to encourage ourselves and that we make it as we continue to persevere. So with, with that, officer, I want you to take me to, let's go to John 5 and 39. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 39. Uh -huh. Search the scriptures, uh -huh. for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Right. When we understanding that we have to come to a place that we are they, we are they that testify of him. Read that verse again also. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 39. Uh -huh. Search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. In the scriptures, that's the go we taking on the mindset that the Most High has called us to do and for us to continue to be faithful in our calling. And understand this, Israel, we can continue to move and walk in the things that the Most High has called us to do. We can be steadfast in our calling. So with that, officer, I want you to give me another verse. Let's go into the book of Matthew chapter 11. Bear with us, Israel. Bear with us. And start at, mm, start at verse 27. Mm -hmm. The book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Mm -hmm. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Read. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. That's why we fall after Christ. Read on. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Reveal him that kept God's commandments. Read on. Come unto me, all ye that labor. And that's what we're doing. In this walk, you're going to have to labor. And we labor on jobs. We labor to get a career. We labor to have a family. And, but I'm telling you, in this walk, we're going to have to labor to get the kingdom. It's no different in the things that you're doing on other uh, things that you think are, you know, can be important, like a family. Like your, your uh, career, those things are important. You labor in that. You, you, you went to school for four years. You went to school for two years. You went to school for six years. You labored in that thing to obtain that thing. It's the same thing in the kingdom, Israel. We must learn how to labor. Read that. From, uh, read on. Yes, read sir. On. Come unto me, all ye that labor. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take laboring. It's going to take enduring. It's going to take overcoming. It's going to take submitting. It's going to take obeying. Read on. And are heavy laden. And you know that it's going to be a test. You know it's a trial. You know that you're having to persevere. Read. And I will give you rest. And that's what the whole thing is about, Israel. It's obtaining the kingdom. It's to get to that place where you can receive the rest that the Most High promised us. That our forefathers received the rest. They endured those things. They, they continued to persevere. They continued to labor in the things that the Most High set before them. They was an example to us. That's why when you go into the, the prophets in that chapter 11 of Hebrews, you see that they all had to do those things. Read on. Verse 29, uh -huh. take my yoke upon you. And that's what we must do. Understand, take this Bible unto ourselves and, and learn of the Most High. Learn what he said. That's what we was talking about in John 5, 39. Search the scriptures and see if you have eternal life. And it go, these are they that testify of me. Read on, officer. Take my yoke upon you uh -huh. and learn of me. And that's what we must do. We must learn our history. We must learn what it takes to obtain salvation. We must learn how to even, on a lower level, just how to be a father, how to be a brother, how to be a sister in the congregation. We have to learn these things that we may get built up in and that we may be able to attain the things that we must obtain. Read on. For I am, for I am meek uh -huh. and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And that's what it's about, Israel. It's, it's telling us that that's what we have to do. We have to continue to endure that we may find rest for our souls. Read that verse again. I like that. Yes, sir. Take my yoke upon you uh -huh. and learn of me. And then we have to learn of him. Take the Bible and learn what it is that the Most High has called us to do. Read. For I am meek mm -hmm. and lowly in heart, 
and ye shall find rest. And when we do those things, when we do what he, he told us to do, that's why it says that it said in verse 27, it said, and the son will reveal him. Those that kept God's commandments, those that done what he said that he told us to do that we may obtain. So what we're talking about, yeah, we have to die to things of this world that we may gain the things that's promised to us. And just like our forefathers did, they done the same thing. They labored too, just like we did, that they may obtain those things. We're not doing nothing no different. We are on that same path to do the will of our fathers. Read on. Ye shall find rest upon your souls. Mm -hmm. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Give me Jeremiah 6 and 16. We're going to close it out right there. The book of Jeremiah. Uh-huh. Chapter 6 and verse 16. Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. That's what we must do. That's what we were talking about early in Matthew, that we must hold fast to the commandments, that we may find rest for our souls. Read on. And ask for the old past. And ask for the old past. We have history where they had gave us examples, and they done those things. That's the old path that we've seen. And even for us now, those are examples unto us. Read on. Where is the good way? And where is the good way that we must follow? How we can obtain, that we can ascribe for mastery, that we can re receive the crown of life as well, Israel. It's the same matter. Read on. And walk therein. And, but what we have to do is walk therein. And that's right. That takes a while. It's a journey. That's what we're on. We're accomplishing this walk. That's why I say it's a walk. You have to continue to overcome. You have to continue to endure Israel. But read on. And ye shall find rest for your soul. And that's what we want. We want that rest. That's, that's what we're all striving for. That's what everybody in Israel is striving for. There's nothing no different. We all are trying to obtain the same goal. Read on. But they said, we will not walk therein. And some of us is getting weary. I've seen in Israel, but I pray that y'all be finding yourself strength in the Lord and continue to persevere that we may find rest for our souls and that we have the mind to do the will of God. And with that, Israel, I'm going to say shalom. I'm Captain Dakar. Glad to have you with us tonight. Uh, with that, I say shalom. Officer? Shalom. Hey, Most High Christ bless. Love y'all, Israel. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.